Good morning. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate the introduction. Um, might just take you with me everywhere I go now. <laughs> Introduce me when I get home. Hey, this is... Uh, I appreciate Pastor Stocks. I, 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 it is unfortunate that he can't be here today, but um, wish him well in his recovery. I really appreciate his uh, allowing me to uh, be here this morning. Uh, I want to say hey to my family, my wife, Jessica, and our two girls, Grace and, and Catherine, are here. As I call them, our princess and pistol or uh, class and sass. Uh, they're here, finished up their dance recital last night, did a great job, girls. Very, Dad is very proud of you. Uh, special thanks to my wife for allowing me to be here. And my dad, my father's here with me. Uh, as I mentioned this morning, I, I, as much as he worked growing up at delivering bread, I, I never remember a time where my father missed an event. And uh, so that is a testimony to how much he loved his kids. And dad, I say thank you uh, for what you did bringing me and my sisters up. Uh, Tangwood is a really important uh, church in this community. When you consider our community actually has probably over 200 churches, uh, you know, this, this organization, this body has really had a major impact. Certainly the victor has been um, an incredible testimony uh, to this body's uh, relationship with the Lord uh, for 25 years. And um, it's meant a lot to our community. I've been to uh, several of the performances. I've been to a few dinner theaters here, had some uh, pre-K graduations uh, here. And uh, another testimony is uh, some of your tech team, uh, Matt Lacoco. he and I have been friends for many years. Uh, Travis Town, he and I have gotten to know each other well over the last year. Uh, his bride, Stephanie, who just did a fantastic job. Um, and uh, Allie White, Allie uh, is an intern now with us at News News, and she is, uh, she's going to do some really big things. I'm really proud of, of Allie. Uh, this morning, Alice Tingle was in the, the, in the building, and uh, she and I served on city council together, uh, so I got a chance to thank her again for that. Um, and two, I, I saw uh, Coach Mooring. Uh, we played, he, man, he was drafting. I was in some of his classes in high school. He's, he's uh, beat me many times and more times than I beat him on the softball field. And uh, so it was good seeing he, him there. The last time I was actually on this stage, uh, we were praying over a dear friend of mine, Scarlett Stovall. Her husband and I uh, were business partners. He's actually from Kinston, um, but his, his bride has been going through a lot of uh, um, health problems and I want you to continue to keep them uh, in your in your thoughts and prayers but the actual the first time I actually stood uh, at this pulpit behind this lectern uh, was uh, I speaking at the going home ceremony for a dear friend of mine a guy named uh, Ted Sampley and if you had a chance to know him you knew that uh, he was a, a champion for veterans affairs uh, he was known internationally um, uh, not on the best of terms with Senator McCain or Senator Kerry uh, because he was more or less an antagonizer, but he always had right, the right intentions, and he loved this community, and I uh, miss him dearly. Um, so it was, it, was, it was a very special day. Pastor Stocks, uh, when he invited me, he, he said, he asked if I'd be willing to speak this day, and he said that as a former young uh, mayor, successful entrepreneur, which I, I dispute with him, um, and, a, and a faithful qu uh, Christian that the, the team would probably think I'd, I'd be a, a good fit for, for this service. He added that my speaking fee would include eggs and tomatoes, and which I knew, knowing some of these tech team guys, that that was probably true. So if I get out of line, I, I expect a few to be tossed my way. Uh, but I, I certainly consider this to be an honor. Uh, my late grandfather, Reverend Emmett Murphy, was a gentleman I never got to meet. Some of you in this room may have uh, sat in one of his services um, but I, I take standing behind this lectern very seriously, and um, I do not claim to be a minister. Uh, I feel like I need to preference some of my remarks with that. Uh, I do not fancy myself as a perfect Christian or father uh, and, and husband, but I do believe that God has shaped some of the tragedies and even the triumphs in my life for such a time as this very special day, about a day where your body honors uh, your graduates, celebrates their achievements, a day where we can celebrate with them and at the same time admonish you as you go forward into this next uh, phase of your life. I do pray that my words uh, help someone here today, uh, if nothing else, to challenge you to go a little bit further, to dig a little bit deeper, uh, to continue to be of value to your community and the body of Christ. I consider my time as your mayor as uh, some of the most um, 
uh, honorable times in, in my life. It was, it was just a, a cherished, I cherished that time very, very much so uh, because the, the duties of that office, even though I was elected at a young age, it didn't change uh, the impact of those words and the leadership would have uh, throughout our community and, and even in some cases, uh, East North Carolina or the state. I served uh, at a time when someone would ask, you know, hey, where are you from? And I, I would say, well, Kinston. And they would go, ah, really? Kinston? Oh, okay. Um, I served at a time where we experienced two hurricanes, uh, Hurricane Irene and 11. You know, some people went during Hurricane Irene uh, for, for roughly seven days without power. And let me tell you a leadership principle I learned about people. You know, three days without power, yeah, you're okay. Four days without power, people lose their minds. Uh, seven days is, is like we're back in the, the, the dark ages. Uh, so I learned a lot of valuable principles about leadership that, that, uh, during that trying time. Uh, of course, uh, Hurricane Matthew was in 16. Uh, that was um, uh, a horrific event for us. I also served during a time, as you remember, we had uh, unreasonably high electric rates. And I would actually say an incredibly low community morale. I also served during a time where the market winds caused us to lose a decades-old uh, minor league baseball team. So that was uh, really tough. And I'm saying some of these things so that you understand some of the, the ideas and some of the thoughts I want to present to you today. Uh, you'll kind of get an idea of how I approach them as a leader, uh, but also, more importantly to me, how the community came together and why I believe this is such a beautiful place. By the time my eight years was up, when someone would ask if, where I was from, and I'd say, Kenston, they go, oh, cool. And they'd mention the wood ducks, they'd mention the chef, they'd mention the boiler room or, or something fun, right? Barbecue festival. The hurricanes that we experienced uh, actually helped us better prepare for Florence in 2018. Although I will say that some of our neighbors who experienced a lot uh, more uh, worse than us probably weren't as prepared as because we've actually been through this number of times. So as bad as those tragedies were, it actually helped us um, in the future. The crime that, that, that we had experienced in those eight years, there was at least two different times where we had some heightened crime. Uh, what we did was actually decentralize the, the idea. Because, you know, when most people think of problems, they, they point to, to you. I mean, you the city, you the pastor, you the business owner, you got to fix this. And uh, the reality is, in, in a community, it really needs to be using the thumb more. Like, hey, you got a you gotta role to play just as much as I do. Business leaders, uh, pastors, uh, the teenagers, the city planning department, the police department, we all have a role to play. And I believe that that helped take a lot of the culture or systemic problems we have and help reduce uh, our, the crime in our community. We also sold our, our stake in nuclear power plants, nuclear power plants. It's not easy to reduce electric rates. So we actually had to sell nuclear and coal power plants to do that. Uh, that was a pretty awesome event. It helped reduce our electric rates 10%. We're still receiving a lot of the benefits in terms of uh, regular uh, uh, stable power to this day. And then finally, one of the highlights of my career and my time as mayor during those eight years was standing on a, the pitcher's mound at Granger Stadium uh, beside uh, the governor of our state and a billionaire who happened to own the uh, Texas Rangers. And I just remember how cool that was. I mean, here I am. I mean, just proud son of a bread man hanging out with the governor and a billionaire. In fact, I learned a valuable, a valuable lesson that day about the perspective of money. And I said, well, what time, what time does their, their plane leave? I mean, I'm thinking, you know, they got to get to Raleigh and drive there. And, you know, they said, uh, whenever they want it to leave. <laughs> so, wow. Wow. I, and, and I haven't said all these things to take credit for any of the good things that have happened. I, it has more to do with, I've always felt that my role was, uh, the role of acknowledging problems and then uh, helping to bring the right people to, to the table and letting the community help fix them. And that's been a lot of fun in, in my leadership role over, over the last few years, just seeing the community come together and do some incredible things. Two of the single most important shapers of my life were, one, the untimely and unfairly death of my mother. I was four and a half years old. And the childhood cancer experienced by one of my younger sisters, which 
Uh, coincidentally, I was her bone marrow uh, donor. And I remember the, the late Charles Buchanan, uh, he came to our house uh, just before I was sworn in as mayor in 2009. He took a photo of me and Grayson, uh, and uh, the caption read, Molding a Mayor. And it was, the story was about some of my family members and how they said, yeah, BJ was, we always knew this would be something he was good at leadership, this is something he would do. But it was also about how all these different tragedies in, our, in my life, how they helped shape my thinking and how I got to this spot. And I'm saying all this to set up what I, what is the few things I want to leave with you today. Because uh, at 38 years old, I, I've had some imp- incredible opportunities. Uh, but certainly if not for my now bride, uh, Jessica, who really put her foot down while I was in college and said, it's, it's me and the Lord or all this fun you're having, uh, I probably would have been on a much different path. And so I d- certainly give her honor and credit for that. I had some really cool opportunities lead, following school to managing the Broken Eagle Eatery to uh, managing downtown Kinston to going into commission-only sales for a decade um, and then starting Magic Mile Media and coincidentally uh, New Snooze just under a year ago. Uh, but I can tell you that having been one of the most, uh, the youngest people in most business meetings I've, I've been, I've been in uh, that I could test that what I've always seen are the opportunities for growth and advance more so than then how will we ever overcome this challenge? Um, and I think that's a big part of why we've invested in our youth so much, from uh, starting an internship program recently to uh, going to college and career fairs uh, and, and touring them at our building at Art 105 where some of my partners work. I mean, just really understanding that our youth and you graduates, how important you are to the future of not necessarily just this community, but to our society as a whole, And we just felt we were going to play our small role there. The title of my message today is Side to Side. I've taken some inspiration from the parable of the talents, some bumps along my personal journey, and even a a romantic comedy. So in Matthew 25, 14 through 30, Jesus uh, shares the now infamous parable of the talents. And to save you from my reading of of these verses, I'll kind of do my best to sum them up in my my own words. See, a successful entrepreneur was going on a trip. And we know he was very successful uh, because he was about to risk eight talents to three of his employees. I mean, imagine your boss walking in tomorrow and say, here's half a million dollars. What would you do? I asked a pastor friend of mine, a couple actually, you know, how much was a, how much was a talent really worth in, in, our, in our dollars today? But it's, I mean, it's really, you got to imagine it's kind of hard to go back 2,000 years and and compare the weight of gold and silver and to what it is today. But some of the best estimates from a couple of my friends' sources that a talent was worth anywhere roughly between four hundred and six hundred thousand dollars today. A talent. When he gave five, when he gave two, when he gave one, right? So after the successful entrepreneur returned from his journey, they, they had a board meeting. And the first employee showed the boss that he turned five talents into ten, which made the boss very happy. So happy that he, he praised him among his peers and gave him more to oversee. The, the employee entrusted with two talents revealed that he too had doubled their investments. And the latest CEO publicly praised him as well and gave him more to oversee. The third employee had to go dig up his talent entrusted to him. He was afraid of his boss and apparently didn't trust in his own God-given abilities. Therefore, he returned the talent to the boss who replied by calling him lazy and wicked. Imagine your boss calling you wicked. We all, I, mean, I, I guess all times we've, we've been called lazy, but wicked, that's, that's strong. So he gave that one talent to the first employee and fired the lazy and wicked employee. Many pastors have preached from Matthew 25, and I, I dare not try to outdo any of them. I, they've been called to preach the gospel, protect their sheep, and win souls to the Lord. I only ask that these next few points that I, I give you today, that maybe, um, maybe it's a way to challenge yourself while we experience this incredible journey we call life. And although I didn't reference the monetary or potential monetary value of a talent earlier, we all understand that Jesus was referring to God's gifts to us and how we should use them. That's why we call it a parable. The CEO rewarded those who put their talents to work, and he punished the ones who hit it. So in the movie Hitch, y'all remember this movie? 
Will Smith and Kevin James. Will Smith was the love doctor. Kevin James was, he, he was a guy who wanted to go on this, this date uh, and actually seek out this, this really girl, this girl who was way out of his league. And so he's the consultant, Will Smith is, and Kevin James, his character, approaches him and says, hey, we got this really cool thing. We're going on a date tomorrow night, and, and there's going to be some dancing. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. Hey, ho, 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 ho. Uh, let me see those moves for a second. And you, just, you see, and I, and I couldn't play the clip because of some of the music in it, but, uh, but you, could just, you could just tell. I mean, he was, I'm going to get the pizza. We're going to toss the, the dough. We're going to do the Q-tip. And he's dancing all these crazy moves, right? Will Smith, his character is just, I mean, you could just see he just wants to kind of backhand him and say no. And Will Smith says, I want your elbows to be locked here, and I want you to go side to side, Right? I mean, even the interpreter's got this down here, side to side. I tell you what, there's a lot of life lessons to be learned in that little moment right there. And I'm going to share a few thoughts of mine together. And a lot of it is side to side. One lesson in life that's helped me... Um, and we could take it from the book of John in 13, is that service to others leads to greatness. The most powerful man on earth, the most famous human being of all time, the man who has had more songs sung in his honor than any before or after him, this same man, Jesus, literally, literally knelt down. The most famous man of all time, See, he had his followers. And in John 13, and you imagine we're in, look to your neighbor. Look to the person right beside you and imagine them with sandals on their feet. And imagine that this was 2,000 years ago. We didn't have this incredible city sewer system we've got now, right? And imagine you're walking through the, the streets and you're going up and down hills and valleys and there's just no telling the grime and grit. And he got down on his knees the most famous man of all time, and he humbled himself. He understood that to use his talents to do what his father commanded him, he had to first humble himself, and I would say that his willingness to serve others in that manner led to his greatness. Second point I want to give you is to master the mundane. In 1 Peter 4.10, it says, each of you should use, should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Mastering the mundane simply means that for you to excel, to grow, you must first master the basics. When we started New Snooze just under a year ago, uh, I'm, I'm a lofty guy. I, I don't mind taking risk. I mean, I don't mind falling flat on my face. It just doesn't bother me. It might bother my wife, but it doesn't bother me. And one thing that I said was that in 12 months, we would have a weekly print edition that we would do with all this incredible news gathering, and then we would have a print. But come month three, I realized that our strength was really more in the digital and the social, the mobile application of what we were trying to do. So immediately I said, no. Month three, I said, no, we're not going to worry about a print for some time. And the other, uh, just last week, I had a mayor of a, another town not too far from the coast say to me, well, BJ, I really like the idea of new snooze and what you're doing. Can you bring that model here? I said, I'd love to, Cindy. I'd love to. But the challenge I've got is that I haven't even mastered our backyard. You know, from my vantage point, we're about 70% of where I want to see our team be on uh, covering local news in Lenore County, and we're probably not even at 10 or 15% of what I think we should be in Green or Jones. And so for me, the idea of going out and doing more and doing bigger is wonderful, but I still feel like we need to be right here. I've got to master side to side, master the mundane. So to our graduates today, expect that your first lessons may seem inadequate to your skill level. The simple task you're given may not live up to your expectations. If you would just mentally reframe their purpose 
as to mastering the basics and showing your employer what you're capable of, then you'll be more valuable and more productive employee. The third point I want to leave you with is answering the question why. Why didn't the three employees receive the same amount of money to invest? Was that fair? Why did each of them have different abilities? God gives us these abilities. Why did he give us different abilities, which led to them getting different amounts of money, large amounts of money? Why, why do bad things happen to good people? Why does the sun rise in the east and set in the west? I don't know. And I would encourage you not to sign up for that class. We spend so much time, so much time trying to answer this question, why? That we become slothful, lazy, like the third employee. We think that if we can just figure out why, then it'll solve all our other problems. And most of the time, at least in my experience, we get bogged down with the why, and we stop using our talents, our skills, and the abilities he gave us to get the job done. The fourth idea or principle or bullet point I want to leave you with is trust and happiness. In Colossians 3.22, says that whatever you do, do it hardly as for the Lord rather than for men, for it is the Lord Jesus Christ whom you serve. And I'm going to suggest in my brief time, uh, my career, that I've met a lot of people from folks who give the trash cans to I think I've had relationships with three different governors. And the truth is, it doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't matter what stage of life you're in or how, how high or how low you or someone else may think your job is. Are you happy? I mean... We don't have a lot of time on this earth. And we still talk about Jesus today, but that was 2,000 years ago. We're lucky if we live to see 95, right? So why spend an entire lifetime and not be happy? Be happy with what you're going to do, what you set out to do. Do it hardly as for the Lord rather than for men. The other one is trust is more important than skill. At least in my eyes, I haven't hired a lot of people. I've had a lot of interviews. I've hired a few now, I would tell you, I'm always going to err on the side of do I trust you before I worry about what kind of skill sets you bring to the table. Trust is more important to me than skill. If I can't trust you, we can't, we can't go the next step. The fifth, the fifth and my final point is uh, related to an oxygen mask. What are you talking about, BJ? Have you ever been on an airplane and the flight attendant gets up there, and they do the seat buckle thing. And then they say, well, you know, here are the exits, right? And then they said that if we experience turbulence, an oxygen mask is going to drop down. Everybody know what I'm talking about? And when one of the first times I got on an airplane and I heard this conversation from the flight attendant, it really bothered me. This idea that if this oxygen mask comes down and my two kids are sitting beside me, that the instruction is to put the oxygen mask on me first and then my kids and then the elderly. See, I'm the guy that, you know, my father taught me to hold the door for the ladies, right? As it, it speaks against the very core of who I am. The point here, though, is how in the world can you help somebody else if you've been hiding your talents? If you haven't been willing to put the work in and help yourself? I want you to give your money away. I want you to give your time away to help others in need. But I promise you, you'll be a lot more effective if you focus on mastering the mundane, these very simple principles, and everyone will be better for it. These nuggets are bits of wisdom. They come from my heart, my experience. The last thing I just want to leave you with is, is don't hide your talents. Use them, because there will be, Pastor, there will be an accounting of how well you use your talents. 
You'll account for them at your job. You'll account for them on April 15th when the IRS says it's time for your taxes to be due. You'll, you'll account for them around the dinner table with your spouse and your kids. They're watching. And eventually, our time will be done. There will be a final accounting for you, for your use of or wasting your God-given talents.